everyone, this is Eternal Blade here, and welcome back to another part of the tutorial. So without further ado, let's jump right in. So um, we're going to start off by making a few adjustments here. Um, so I want to bring this, uh, again, I just have the image on my other monitor here. So we just want to bring this up a little bit. Uh, this is more located more towards the top. And then we're just going to actually scale it to give it a bit more thickness. Okay. Perfect. There we go. And then um, uh, let's go to isolate selection. And I'm itching like crazy right now. Just watch out. I was out picking weeds in my yard, and apparently the uh, mosquitoes are out in force. And what is wrong with this? Well, that is uniquely interesting. Huh. So don't ask me how that happened. Okay. Um, but yeah, so mosquitoes. Wow. Those things are brutal right now. So be careful. All right. So we're just going to give us a small chamfer. And a turbo smooth. One iteration, maybe two. What are we looking at here? What happened? Why is something wrong? There should be nothing wrong here. Hmm. Perhaps it wants some edge loops. <coughs> So let's connect these with two and then change the pinch to basically you know, 99 and go into the front viewport here. And let's adjust these just to get them a bit closer because we just want to make a uh, hard edge. Okay. That looks like it solved our problem. Yes, I believe it did. All right, and isolation mode. Uh, let's go to the camera here. That was good, perfect. All right, um, next, uh, let's start on, hmm, what do we wanna start on? All right, let's, uh, perspective here for a moment and let's just hide selected and hide selected let's just give us a little better idea of what we got so I think we can work on uh, this piece here for now uh, I'm just going to zoom in and it looks like Trying to see if it has a lip along the edge. Looks like it's got some sort of a lip along the edge. So uh, let's. How do I want to do this? Um, let's go into edge selection mode here. Well, actually, here. We can take all these, extrude down by just a bit. Not much, mind you. All right. And then let's um, do the same on the top. We'll just extrude upward. Okay, extrude. Good deal. And let's apply turbo smooth. Now it's not going to come out perfect yet. But uh, oops, give it two iterations here. All right, at least we're getting there. All right, next let's um, go into the front view and we can actually isolate selection here. And let's connect these two of them and bring the pinch out. All right. So now what we've got is something interesting looking. 
Um, so let's add some additional geometry over here. All right. Just slide it over. Good deal. Uh, next, we probably want to. Let's see. We should probably add a connection going over around here. <clears throat> Which we'll see if we can do that. No, we can't. Good. All right. So let's slide it right towards the edge there. Okay, and there we go. Now we've got some nice sharp uh, edges. And then we've got, it looks like just a lighting problem. I don't think we have any trouble there. Although I don't know if we need this second loop. So we're actually just going to bring it up just to even out the geometry a bit. We got a square and a square. Okay, that's good. Um, next, let's grab all these bottom pieces here. And we will inset them a bit. Okay, what we're doing here is just creating a little uh, lip. All right. And we will take this line. And make sure you save your work. Every time it lags, I always get kind of afraid that, uh, oh no, it might break. Okay, so we're still good. So now what we need to do is grab um, yeah, grab these two polygons all the way around. And this should allow us the lip we're looking for. So let's uh, extrude here. Just a little bit, not much. Apply and continue. And then give it a much smaller lip. Okay, now if we turbo smooth, now we should have a nice um, sort of defined lip on the edge here which we do. And actually let's uh, connect that and we will slide it up there just to give it a bit more definition. All right, and let's do some adjustments over here. All right, just make sure we don't grab anything else and just bring it kind of towards the edge. And actually, I wonder if we can, well, we could put some additional geometry, but probably not worth it. So we'll just bring it there. And this actually is going to be hidden. So what I can do, sort of cheating, is just grab these polygons and just give it Bit of an extrusion and that will prevent it from doing anything weird or at least prevent it from doing anything too weird we can always sink it back into the wall a bit to hide any uh, issues we might have and actually what we should do and now that I think about it would be a good idea would simply be to delete um, all the polygons on one side here. And let's get rid of that. And the reason I'm saying that is because actually we do want those. If we delete them, they uh, can't mess up our turbo smooth, which is quite useful. Okay, delete that. 
second. And watch out. You don't you only want to get the bottom one. Alright, now turbo smooth should be nice and happy. Mostly. What are we missing here? Something about these vertices over here is not right. All right, well, it looks like we've got a vertice we can delete right there. And are we good? I think we're good. like clean geometry this looks like not so clean uh, what did we delete I think we deleted something we probably shouldn't have deleted hmm oh well we'll just uh, like this one right here we have some extra geometry I don't know where exactly it came from. I don't know why it's here. But I think we can solve the problem pretty easily by simply coming in here and target welding to there. And that should resolve our problem. Go to the top viewport and simply oops, grab this and drag it down. There we go. And exit and isolation mode. Go into your camera view. And there we go. Now we've got our nice little uh, beveled edge. Okay. Let's unhide all. All right. I'm actually wondering, unit setup. Let's just do like centimeters or something. I just want to see about what size we're doing. I mean, a problem like if I zoom in. Well, well, of course now it doesn't want to do it. Well, maybe because I changed the unit size, it's happy. Okay, well, we'll uh, carry on. So, let's see, what do we want to do now? This edge here almost seems a bit too soft. So we're going to bring it up a bit. Okay, and that should sharpen it. And even more so. Well, that should do about what we want. What we could do is grab this line here and bring it down. It'll make it even more sharp. Okay, now that should work. All right, let's um. <clears throat> get a tube we'll just sort of make a tube right here we're making the um, uh, light ring thing we give it 24 segments we don't need nearly as many height segments and go to convert to editable poly control alt q is the hotkey I have set up for that all right, shift, uh, double click. Let's just bevel it a couple times here just to give it you know, some sort of uh, shape. Good deal. And then grab the top and just, there we go, bevel it once. And then what we need to do is use a turbo smooth. 
Okay, just smooth it out, and then let's move it. Um, into position on the light. Alright, that works. And actually, let's see. Disk lights, probably what I want anyway. You don't have to worry about these lights. These are uh, V-Ray lights by default. I'm just sort of playing around with them. Just so I can get things the way I want them. Do not move the camera. I wish there was a way to lock that camera easily, but I have not yet found out how they do that. What is this? This must be our old thing, so we can get rid of that. And maybe we can. Go under edit a little poly here. Just drag those up just a bit, just to give it some extra height we can work with. And then bring that back down. Okay. Look at this camera. Why don't you just go into shaded mode here just so we can get a good idea? Perspective Z F3. Let's see where exactly we are. There we go. And let's, hmm, increase the radius of this light. All right, maybe decrease it a bit. We just sort of want it to fit in here. Good deal. And bring it up a bit. Perfect. Now let's go back to realistic. And of course we're completely dark. Why are we completely dark? I don't know why we're completely dark. Eh, well, we'll resolve the issue as it comes up. Uh, let's also just quickly here, um, V-Ray, let's add a V-Ray sun into our front here. Bam add the sky <coughs> and good deal okay so we have that so I don't understand it why does no that light doesn't really do much either okay um, let's see All right, um, so we can reuse this asset. And actually, let's just build a um, cylinder, sort of right here, just very thin. Now this would be the sort of piece of glass that goes here. All right, and then put the light directly below that piece of glass. There we go. It's like the glass and a fixture. And we will just shift drag it over to the other one. I'll make those an instance, I guess. We only want to change one. Delete what was already there and grab this and make it so that it is directly in the ceiling here. Okay, so if we kind of come over here, there it is, and just want a little bit sticking out. Perfect. All right, so we go into the camera. All right, uh, Skype calls do sometimes distract me. All right, so shaded. Definitely moved on accident. All right. Um, I'll figure out that lighting here in a bit. Um, so we've got that. That's good. Now let us let's see. 
minutes in. I guess what we can work on, let's actually position this a little better. This is going to go up a little bit and probably a little closer to the wall. Okay, so basically this thing is sort of halfway uh, between there. And this looks like one of those single cruise light switches. I'm just seeing if I can find an image of it here. Um, single maybe wall switch. Big. Yeah, here we go. So it's basically like uh, this. They're just kind of a big, big boxy thing. So we're just going to see if we can model something very similar. Uh, so let's isolate our selection here from this perspective. And uh, from, let's go to the left view. Um, so what we need is, I'll convert that to an editable poly here. Select the front and the back. Actually, we'll just do Alt W here. And we'll inset it. Whoa, that is a tiny little thing to be insetting. Okay, we don't need to inset nearly that much. Let's just inset to about there. And the same for on this side, if not bigger. Click your two sides. Um, let's do a bridge. All right, and then select all your edges, chamfer. Give it a very small chamfer, okay. And then select all your edges over here. And give it a connect, two connects. And we'll go right to the edge. All right, and then if we do a turbo smooth, okay, we should have just a nice um, uniformed thing here. All right, let's actually bring these in just a tad. Just to thicken it up. Okay. Perfect. Uh, have two looks. Eh, doesn't much matter. All right. Let's actually also um, in the inside here do a connect with your two loops. That will make sure the inside stays nice. Perfect. Uh, next, let's get on the front view here and just build a box kind of the same size as this and the same width. Wherever it is, move it into place. All right, maybe decrease the uh, height just a bit. All right, there we go. And kind of stick it out just a tad and convert that to an editable poly. And we can just select all the edges, chamfer, give it a very small chamfer. Okay, that works. And then we can select the edges here and connect it. Two pinch would be so the 90 and add a turbo smooth. All right, let's give it two iterations. And looks like we need some more geometry here. So select this edge, connect, and bring it out 97 or so. Connect it this way with the same thing. And now if we turbo smooth it, there we go, perfect. Next, let's just sync a uh, one side, you don't have to use angle snap if you don't want to. And actually, that's the top. We don't want the top. We want the side here. There we go. So just like that, kind of giving it the indication that um, it can rotate. <clears throat> Maybe not even that much. Bring it in just a bit. 
Okay, and then make it so the top is just flush there. All right, go into the left-hand view, and let's just position it here, maybe scale it out just a bit. All right, that will probably have to do. Maybe just bring these. I'm just trying to get the edges as close as possible. Bingo, that should be it. All right, and that should pretty much do it for our little um, wall switch. Let me look at the picture again here. I actually have sort of, well, not really though. Okay. So let's uh, end isolation mode here. Right, go to our camera. And there we go. The wall switch looks pretty good. Alrighty. And I think actually there might be. Hmm. I'm fairly certain there's another wall switch somewhere, but uh, we can leave that there for now. So let's save our thing. Okay, get this. It. Actually, let's group. Let's create a group group, and we'll call this light switch. And we'll just assign that the gray material for being done, and assign this gray. Okay. Assign that and assign. Oops, not that, but that gray. All right. So. Um, Let's just, if we go into realistic, it probably won't do anything because we kind of messed up the lighting. But all right, so uh, that'll be it for this part. Um, we're moving along. You can see we've uh, slowly getting there. We're getting to the more complex pieces coming up. Uh, you know, working on the TV, the bed, you know, the, the chairs and the fruit bowl and such. But we'll get there in time. So uh, thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next part.